Welcome to another episode of Dig Deeper. I'm senior staff archaeologist Sean Romo with Jamestown Rediscovery. And today we're going to be checking in on an excavation we recently finished here in the historic churchyard at Jamestown. You may remember from a few weeks ago, in episode 17 of Dig Deeper, that we had some storm damage here in the historic churchyard at Jamestown. Uh, we had a tree break in half and a tree limb embedded itself in the ground. Now we started an excavation in that space to see what the limb had damaged and see if we could get it out without hurting any of the archaeological resources. Uh, now we've recently completed that excavation and we found some unusual things. So come on over here and we're going to check out what we found. So, Normally when we excavate, we dig in 10 foot by 10 foot squares. But in this case, we went a little bit smaller. We just did a 5 foot by 5 foot square around where our tree limb had impacted the ground. We just wanted to see what that limb damaged, if anything. Now we knew since we were digging in the historic churchyard uh, that we were going to inter intersect some burials. And we were worried that the limb had damaged some skeletal remains. Thankfully that was not the case. Uh, when we dug down deep enough to get the limb out, we found that it, it had impacted right here. In fact, that hole is from the tree limb crashing into the unit, but it didn't really damage any burials. What it did impact, and what we were surprised to find, was this brickwork. Now, right now, we think the brick, at least in part, is a historic pathway through the churchyard. And we think that for a couple of reasons. When we found this brick, the first thing we noticed was that it was laid on end. You can see there kind of vertically embedded in the ground. And that's unusual for any kind of structure. That's not how you would build a foundation. Uh, the next thing we noticed was that there was no mortar bonding the bricks together. It's what we call dry laid brick. Now, if you were building a wall or a foundation for a building, you would expect these bricks to be mortared together. And if these were fragments of a structure that had collapsed, we would also expect to see chunks mortared together. There'd probably be loose bricks all over the place, you know, as the wall falls apart, but pieces would remain bonded. And that's not the case here. So that tells us this is probably not a foundation and probably not part of a building's wall. Uh, the next thing we noticed was that these bricks were not reused. Uh, now we know that because when you look closely at them, you can see there's no mortar on them at all. Not only are they not bonded together, but there's no remnant of any mortar that's been scraped off. And we see that where bricks have been reused from different buildings. Uh, in the 16 and 1700s, if you didn't want to buy a new brick, but you had a crumbling structure nearby, you might take those bricks, clean off the big chunks of mortar, and then use them for your new construction. But that would leave a little skin of mortar on the face of the brick, and we don't see that here. So that tells us these are freshly made when they're used. Now, we also noticed that the bricks are very, very soft. And you can see they're very crumbly. Uh, in some cases, the brick is more like uh, hardened clay than actually a brick. Um, these were probably very low fired. When you're making bricks, you want to subject them to relatively high heat uh, to make sure they're nice and solid and strong. In this case, they were probably subjected to kind of low heat, uh, meaning they don't hold together quite as well. Uh, so, these bricks would not have been suitable for use in a building or a wall. They're just not strong enough. But for a pathway, let's say, they would work pretty well. And this type of construction, vertically laid bricks, very soft bricks, no mortar on them, that all kind of suggests that a pathway is the most likely feature to incorporate this material. When we excavated here, we didn't just go right down to the brick level. We always dig in natural layers. Basically, what uh, different types of soil are here, uh, we take out individually, separately. And in this particular unit, we saw a few different types of soil. First thing we saw was a nice dark topsoil, relatively modern. Uh, it actually goes pretty deep in this corner over here because there were eroded out root holes. Uh, when a tree dies, the roots decay, Oftentimes they leave cavities, and in this case, these cavities collapsed and filled with topsoil. 
So we see them kind of protruding down, and you can see them moving across portions of the unit, all of that dark gray material. Uh, we also found gravel. Now that gravel represents a uh, pathway through the cemetery, probably from the 1950s or there about that time. Um, so something more recent. Underneath that material, we found this nice brown soil. Now, right now, we think that represents landscaping activity uh, that was done in the 1900s to level out the churchyard. Uh, although there is the possibility that some of it dates to the 16 or 1700s. We're still working on figuring out that right now. Uh, all of this material sat on top of the bricks and the burials. One of the things we saw in the brickwork when we exposed it was that not all the bricks are angled the same way. Uh, in fact, you can see over here that the middle section, the bricks seem to turn almost. That suggests that maybe they're curving around some previous uh, structure or feature that was standing nearby. This is going to be one of the things we look at when we try to figure out when this brickwork went into the ground, uh, if we can identify a previous structure or a monument or something else that was nearby that this might have been avoiding, that might tell us when the brickwork was created. One of the other things we noticed when we were digging in here was that the brickwork was cut through by several burials. And you can see a few right here. This nice rectangular one, and then one right here, and another one right here. Now, because the brickwork was so soft, the folks who dug these burials back in the 16 or 1700s were able to actually chop right through the bricks. And you can see this most clearly in that wall over there. We have rectangular bricks, and then you can see there's a little triangular nub that has been sliced through by later activity. Now, it's unlikely that nub was intentionally shaved. That's got to be from a shovel cutting through it. And because the bricks were so low fired, they were easy to cut through. So one of the burials that stands out most clearly is right over here along the north wall. Now that fill is similar to the soil that's over top of it. So if we ever open up an adjacent unit, we're going to be trying to investigate that space and make sure that our interpretation is correct, that that is a burial. But that's what it seems like right now. Um, and you can see there's a big hole right at the seam of that burial. That's where one of those roots had decayed out and collapsed, leaving a big cavern. And so in that space, some brick had sunken down and been moved out of place relative to where it was. One of the other things we found underneath the tree limb was what we call native horizon, that nice dark gray soil right in the middle of the unit. Now that's the original topsoil for the island. That's what the colonists and the Native Americans who were out here with them would have been walking on back in the early 1600s. We're always very excited to find this because it tells us that not only has no plowing or other damage been done to the ground surface out here, but that soil layer often holds artifacts from the be very beginning of European settlement. So we really like to investigate that. And seeing it underneath the brickwork tells us that the bricks were laid right on top of the ground surface and that there is no burial in that location. So it's very informative for us too. So, this is as far as we're going to excavate in this space. Um, all that remains to do here are to take some photographs and write up some detailed notes about what we found. After that, we're going to fill in this test unit to preserve the archaeological resources in place. Now, because this brickwork is so interesting and so surprising, we are planning on doing a little bit more in the churchyard down the line. Uh, we're probably going to start with a ground penetrating radar survey to see if we can find more of the brickwork without digging. And then maybe in a year or so, we'll come back here and do a little bit more excavation, depending on what else is going on at the site. We've always got new things going, and so it may be a little while before we can come back to this spot, but it is now on the list. So stay tuned for more exciting discoveries from Jamestown. Thanks for watching Dig Deeper.